So the question was what? Yeah, we'll give lumber its grain pen. Okay, so that's one of the benefits um, with working with lumber as compared to metal. That you know, it's one of the natural beauties of it. You have actual grain pen rather than just having a big chunk of steel. You have some texture and everything going on. Okay. So what were some of the things you guys said as to why it, uh, how it kind of grew up? Okay, so how it grows. What do you mean by that? Um, you know, like you know, the rains. Yeah, so the annual rains. So you guys all know that if you have your tree here, if you have our roots, trees grow up, right? And as they grow, they grow out in diameter, they get bigger. So it puts on those annual rings, right? Kind of like a bullseye looking thing. So you, the way, the reason why you have the great parents is again just because of the annual ring, annual rings, right? So as it grows and as you saw it up, you end up getting the grain pattern, okay? And as you start to get more or work more and more with um, lumber and everything, you kind of sell, tell where it came from relative to the tree. Is that bunch or not? Okay. So like this one here kind of came towards the center. You can see uh, that you have on the sides more straight grain. Uh, towards the center is kind of has a circle pattern. Okay. So I'm not asking you guys to be able to identify where it came from out of the tree. Just know that obviously the, the annual rings will give you the grain pattern. Okay. okay so what's that? Okay. Um. All right. One of the things that we have. What do you guys also notice besides the grain? What else do you notice on this board here? Yeah, yeah. Knots, right? Okay. What causes the knots? Branches. The branches, right? So that's all that um, the knots are. And as the tree grows, it gets branches as well. Okay? There's a branch. That's going to eventually end up causing a knot. Now, there's two types of knots that you'll have to know. Okay? So you have live knots and dead ones. Okay? So if we had to choose this board here, would you say that these knots were live or dead? Dead. Dead, why? It's a it's out. Tree. That's it. It's not the ground. Well, okay, well, <laughs> so, um, so if it isn't a, if it's still part of the tree, would it be live then? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone else have another idiot? They're black. They're black, okay. Not quite. Um, I don't know, they're not Yeah. Yes, that's one way to put it. If you look through here, you guys can actually see through the board. Okay, so what ended up happening was that branch um, was dead when the tree was cut down. Okay, so pine is a self pruning tree, so the branch ended up breaking off or got cut off. So it was actually dead, and right now that so uh, it got pushed out. Okay, so eventually it would have been pushed out. Um, if you have a live knot. What ends up happening is you have something that looks like this. Okay, so it's a nice tight, it's basically part of the lumber. It's still in there. You can end up planing it and everything. As we get more in depth into like safety and working with it, you'll need to pop out the dead knots if you have any in your lumber, okay? Just so that you don't have any tear out here. Like this one, if you guys can see that this knot right here is actually sticking out past the board, even though it's the same uh, thickness or length, I can actually take my fingers and push that dead knot out. Okay. So that's an example. So you have your live knot and your dead knot. That one's dead. Okay. Your, um, going on to that, well next I'll show a video. Okay. I just want to get you guys the basics of, I'm going to show you the process of actually sawing up lumber. We're not going to be sawing up any lumber in this class. But how do you guys think you end up getting lumber? Just 
is smashing. It's a plane. It's a plane. This is how, from how it's made. Okay, so we'll kind of go through this. So this is. I burned it what this is, like I said, what we're going to talk about is just the process, guys, the industrial process of sawing lumber. Okay, so you can, I'm sure a lot of people, um, you know, whether it's yourself or your uncle or, you know, grandpa or somewhere, and um, saw up. You can saw up your own lumber. This is, like I said, the industrial way to do it. Okay, so it's pretty much, like we said, automated. Uh, yeah. More. The more material you can put out, the more money you make, okay? Because you have to pay for all the machines here. For city dwellers, all it takes today is a trip to your local renovation center to buy two by fours, two by tens, you name it. Walking them into construction wood isn't that complicated. At first, they soak the logs for about. Oh, oh, right. To buy two. And turning them into construction wood isn't that complicated. At first, they soak the logs for about 20 minutes. This removes the mud and softens the bark to make it easier to remove. The logs go through the debarker, a machine with a rotor that shaves off the bark. The rotor has six sharp blades that take just 10 seconds to shave a log bare. Okay, so while this is, there's a lot of different ways that you can debark it. And before, the older way to do it, I guess, you know, back the traditional way, is you actually have like a hand hand scraper. And you'd actually take it and you'd have to scrape it all off by hand. So you'd actually work with the grain, pulling off all the bark, the bark. Okay? But obviously that takes a lot of time. Time is money. Okay? Trying to turn out as much product as you can. Uh -oh. In the filing room, they regularly sharpen and inspect the saw blades they'll use to cut the shaved logs, straightening them back into shape when necessary. In this sawmill, there are two production lines. The wider logs go through this saw. So all this is again, if you guys can see that, it's just an oversized band saw. Laser to help him position and reposition each log as he runs it through the saw several times to cut it. See the actual band back here, as cutting. possible. And the average log usually yields about right seven or eight pieces. The narrower logs go through a different saw. This saw first cuts a board off each side, then sends what's left of the log onto another saw. The 4 by 10s on the first production line go for a second cut called the resaw. They're cut in half into 2 by 10s. The logs on the second production line end up here in what's called the canterbull machine. It has eight adjustable circular saws that can cut the log into various sizes of wood, anywhere from 2 by 3s to 2 by 8s, depending on the log's diameter. Uh, 
both production lines feed to machines that smooth the edges and trim off any defects that can affect the strength or resistance of the wood. And then an automated sorter drops the wood into bins according to their size. Each bin then feeds the stacking machine. From here, they'll put the wood into a kiln to be dried to about 15% humidity. Then they'll grade the pieces and ship them to a lumber yard or renovation store. Okay, so they said that they're going to be put it into a kiln. Okay, and all that is is what? Just a furnace. Yeah, it's just a big furnace or a big oven. Okay, so it takes out all the humidity because again the tree was living, so it had all the, the moisture, the sap, all that water built up in there. So you want to dry that out. And there's two ways that you can dry that out: either the kiln, which is faster. Okay, one of the downsides of that is since it is faster, you have to take a little bit more time. It's a little bit you have a little bit more tendency of uh, forged warp um, and also crack. Okay. The other way is what? Air dry. Air dry, right? So you end up just cutting it like they did here. And instead of putting it into a kiln, you just go and stick it like in a barn or let somewhere to dry. Okay. It still has a tendency to warp and crack, but you know, not as much because it's not as drastic of change. It's more of a slight one, but I mean, you can still get those boards that are warped pretty bad and from either kiln drying or uh, air drying. If you notice that they had these little slats placed in between each layer of the boards, what are those for? For air flow, those are little tender on top of each other, little water takes on. Yeah, so the whole reason why we're, we cut them up and dry so that the water and the moisture can evaporate out of them. Now, if you end up just stacking them right on top of each other, the ones right in the middle, the only way that they really have airflow is right on the ends, right? The only ones that are getting the most airflow are the ones on the tops and the ones on the edges, right? So if you end up putting slats and spaces in between there, the air can flow in between the individual layers, getting a much more even um, drying time. <laughs> What does it mean when they said they grade them? What's that? What does it mean when they said they grade them? They grade them. So like we'll talk about that with plywood. So by grade it mean, basically means like quality. So you know if this one has straight grain um, and few knots, then that would be a higher quality than one that's you know has kind of a poor grain cracks in there. Um, there's Kind of some big knots, there's a big tree coming out, or a big branch coming out. Hey, right. next part that I want to talk about. Hey, okay, so you know how um, lumber's made? The big thing that I want you guys to take away from that is different parts of the board. So when we're talking about you know dimensions or what process needs to come next, and we're kind of communicating, you know, which one. We're talking about okay so you have you end up having your uh, your face your edge and your end okay so those are the three surfaces of a board so if I'm looking at a piece of solid lumber here you have basically your two faces they're all opposite of each other your top and your bottom your sides and your ends right so if we had say a B C what surface would A be? Face. The face, right? So the top, your widest dimension is going to be your face. Okay? What would B be? And your end. Okay? Your end. And then C would last be your edge. Okay? So those you'll need to know um, your face, your edge, and your end. Any questions? Um, 
next thing that I wanted to show is what we'll be spending the rest of the, the time today on. It's kind of like I said, those the radial arm saw do's and don'ts. So that's the first uh, machine that we'll be working with and taking our safety test on is going to be the radial arm saw because we already have basically towards the end of the, that video they show the lumber it's all dry and everything we bought that out in the shop so that's there now what we have to do is go ahead and continue squaring it up so that's the first machine that we're going to be using um, Monday I'll go through a demo of that and how to do it um, and that'll hopefully be quicker since we you guys will have the experience from the video that we'll be watching. Um, Tuesday will be our test, and then Tuesday will actually be in the lab for Okay. So, uh, if I mentioned this before, you'll need safety glasses, and those are two bucks each. Um, and we can buy those either before, during, or after. Okay. So just make sure you have your safety glasses. If you have some from home, that's fine. Just make sure that they're approved. Okay. And if you have a question, I'll look at them and tell them what you know. Pretty much all safety glasses are. They'll have the Z, Z87 on there. Okay. So that'll say that it's safety. It's approved for safety glasses. All right. The next thing that I want to show is, like I said, we're going to go into the CAD lab and watch those videos of the radial arm saw. And I'll show you where you guys can get that information. How do you guys have been um, have, have been either in the cab lab or in Miss Benish's uh, computer lab? Okay. Um, all right, then when we go in there, you guys can just start logging on. It should be the same log on. If you're having difficulties, let me know. We'll, we'll if you guys go to um, Edmodo, the last post, it'll say here. So it says, use the two links below to compare the differences between the videos. You should be able to find at least 15 uh, correct safety rules and operation operation guidelines. You guys just sit down. Okay? Between the two um, videos. Okay, so what that means is 15 totals, not not 15 safety rules and 15 operating or guidelines. Okay, so 15 total. Basically, the difference is you watch the two videos, find out what the difference between those two are, and then you just write those down, and those will be you one day. Okay. You guys want to go through a quick example or you yes. can figure it out? Okay, that's right. All right, you guys can go ahead. Uh, walk in the corner of the camera. Oh, that's your. Oh, Going the wrong way. Oh, God. Am I right, Riley? Yeah, we can get in there from this way, too. Okay. I yeah. Yeah. If um, 